Hello, this is James D'Angelo and welcome to the Bitcoin 101 Blackboard series. Today we're doing part one on a two-part series about 51% attacks. And in this episode, we're going to be looking at the cost of doing a 51% attack. Now, you don't have to look too far online to see people already offering prices for you. So if you go to this site right here, coinmetrics.com, you get an up to the minute, up to the second cost. And right now, they are suggesting that the price is 750 $58,620,805. Well, when Bitcoin's price was higher, you heard things like even a billion dollars. But it's important to calculate these things for yourself, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So what are the ingredients of creating a 51% attack? Well, the attack is mostly hardware. So what you're going to need is a number of ASICs. And remember, ASICs are application-specific integrated circuits. And these are chips manufactured at one of the world's big chip foundries, maybe in China, Taiwan, other places. And the chips themselves are actually pretty small, so they're less than a half inch square. And these chips, the ASICs, the application-specific thing they do is they do SHA-256. And SHA-256 is an early complex algorithm, but the chip can do one SHA-256 hash in one clock cycle, which makes it significantly faster than CPUs or GPUs. So really, if you are mining Bitcoins these days, you are using ASICs, chips that are designed strictly for mining Bitcoins, because really there's no other application on Earth that needs super fast SHA-256. So once you have your ASICs, you're going to need to power yourself up. You're going to have to run these things with electricity. They're pretty power hungry. And kind of a good rule of thumb is that you're going to need about one watt per giga hash. And then you're going to need some computers, right? These ASICs need something to connect to. Connect to the internet, have some access to blockchains, connect to a mining pool. They're going to need something that can get them online. But because most of these ASICs now being developed come with a little bit of their special hardware, you can mostly just use really cheap Raspberry Pis. And with one Raspberry Pi, you can even run a number of ASICs. Okay, so you can just think of Raspberry Pi as a very cheap computer. Okay, so now that we have the ingredients, let's figure out how much these things cost. So, in terms of buying ASICs, there's a number of companies that are now offering sort of the fastest ASICs available. And to get our baseline numbers, we're going to look at KNC. So let's hop online. And here we are at KNC Miners page. And they're about to release this thing called Neptune Second Batch, which is a three tera hash miner for $10,000. And that's really all the numbers we're going to need from KNC. So let's go back. The KNC Neptune gives you three terahashes per second for 10,000 USD. And so you can think of that as one terahash per second is going to cost you 3,333 USD. Okay, so now we're missing one very important number as we do our calculation. We're going to need to know the total hash power of the network. And fortunately, that's very easy to find. We just head over to blockchain.info right here, and we look at their chart, which plots total hash power over time. So here we are, November 2013. The total hash power of the network was approximately four peta hashes. Okay, and then in January, it went up to around 10 or 11 peta hashes. And then in March, we were looking at 30 peta hashes. And right now, a pretty good round number is to consider that the network is at 50 peta hashes. Okay, so the total hash power of the network today is 50 peta hashes per second. And so we know that one peta hash is a thousand times bigger than one tera hash. So if we wanted to run a 51% attack, there are two ways to do it. The first way would be to somehow wrestle over half the hashing power from people that are already hashing. Okay, so what you would need to do to get 51% attack is you'd need to grab around 26 peta hashes from current miners. So you'd leave the rest of the network with 24. And that's not perfectly 51%, but for a 51% attack, it's approximate that matters, all right? You just have to be over 50% of the network. And clearly, if we grab 26 peta hashes, we'd be pretty close to running a 51% attack. The other way to do it is to add hashing power to the network. So right now it's at 50. If we were to add 51 peta hashes to the network right now, this very second, we would have a 51% attack because the total hashing power would suddenly be at 101 peta hashes per second and we would own 51, which again is not an exact calculation, but it's greater than 50%. Okay, so these are the two ways that you could do it. 
And so to calculate our 51% attack for today, let's calculate using the higher number. Let's add on to the network 51 pay to hashes today and figure out how much that's going to cost. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to figure out how many of these K and C miners right here, these three tera hash per second, that we're going to have to buy to get 51 pay to hashes. Well, that's pretty easy. We take 51,000 and we divide by three. Remember, a pay to hash is a thousand times a tera hash. So this is the calculation we'll need. So let's go to our calculator and we'll type this in. 51, one, two, three, divided by three equals 17,000. So we're going to need to call up KNC and get 17,000 Neptunes. And we know the price of those Neptunes. They are 10K a piece. Okay, so 10,000 times 17,000 gives you $170 million. So just to get the ASICs to run a 51% attack today, we would need to have $170 million. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to figure out how much electricity we're going to need today to run our 51% attack. And fortunately, that's also kind of available online. So we'll go to this Bitcoin mining profitability calculator. And here, hopefully, it's giving you the current difficulty, but it's actually not even important to know the difficulty as long as we know that we have 51% of the hashing power. Bitcoins per block, again, not that big a deal if we just want to run a 51% attack, regardless of how much we're going to make. But right now, we know for the next couple of years that the amount of Bitcoins that you can earn per block are 25 Bitcoins. The conversion rate, so we have to get the current Bitcoin price, which is around $450, and then our hash rate. And clearly, I have already typed this in, but we're looking for 51 pay to hashes, which is 51,000 tera hashes, right? And over here, you can select mega hashes, giga hashes, and tera hashes. But since no one has miners that are pay to hashes, they don't allow that option. So we wrote in 51,000. The electricity rate is about 15 cents per kilowatt hour and our power consumption. And so for power consumption, remember, we're going to assume that it's one watt per giga hash. You can actually do better than that, but this will up the price if we assume one watt per giga hash. And so that's fairly easy to calculate, and this number is not correct. Okay, we would need 51 million because here's giga hashes, right? Here's tera hashes, and here's peta hashes. And the time frame, well, months, eh, we don't really care. We could put in whatever number we want because this thing will give you the price per day and the cost of our mining hardware. Now remember, our mining hardware costs 170 million, but since computers are required to run this mining hardware and you don't need very expensive computers at all, in fact, you can buy them much, much cheaper than you would buy the ASICs themselves, let's toss on another 5 million bucks worth of computing, basically Raspberry Pis, okay? So that our total hardware is gonna be $175 million. And again, that number is not truly important, but let's make sure we've got thousands, millions, 175. And profitability decline per year, again, we don't really care. But this thing, fortunately, is now gonna calculate our electricity costs. And here it is. Power cost per 24 hours, and that price is in dollars, and we are talking $183,000. So if we wanted to run a 51% attack today, now we have a pretty good price. We've got $170 million just for the ASICs. We've added another $5 million for the computers, and now we've added electricity. And our electricity in the United States was 183, so let's call it 185000 so our total price is $175,185,000. Well, what's very interesting about this is if you go and look back over here, you see that they're giving you a number of 758 million and the numbers changed since we started so it's keeping it up to date and so contrary to what we saw before you would get a current price of running a 51 percent attack of 175 million dollars let's call it 176 million dollars okay now a lot of people are going to have troubles with this they'll say you can't get all those asics today the hashing power is always going up you have to take that into account because by the time you get the asics the hashing power is going to go up but one thing that's clear is that we're significantly less than the price we were seeing on the website and often we hear in talks people talk about billion dollars to do a 51 percent attack the other interesting thing about this is that this price has actually gone substantially up over the past couple months a few months ago this price was under 100 million dollars and again the price is going to rely a lot on announcements of knc and other miners all right so if they come in with much much cheaper miners or if their prices are going up or whatever 
this is going to dramatically change the ability to do a 51% attack. So if someone comes in with a much cheaper version of KNC Neptune, which seems likely, right, you can see that the price might drop from 160 million again to under 100 million dollars. So regardless of what you think about future hashing power growing or whether hardware is limited, theoretically it seems very clear that for 200 million dollars we could probably run a 51 percent attack and it seems even more likely that if we were going to use something like 600 million dollars well we could run better than a 51 percent attack we could run a 66 percent or a 75 percent attack and every increase you make over 50 percent allows you to go back in time and actually start tearing apart the blockchain and so yes, as we have suggested, the hashing power is growing exponentially. But there is something that counters that, which is new companies are also dropping the prices of ASICs. And in fact, they're dropping the price of hashing power in something that's kind of related to Moore's law. So there's an exponential increase in hashing power in the network, but there's also an exponential increase in price of ASICs. And so this tends to leave the price of running a 51% attack about the same. Now one thing we have to concern ourselves is that hardware is limited, right? If you went to KNC right now and you said you wanted to buy 51 peta hashes, well it seems likely that they won't have that on hand. Okay, so even if you have the money, you might not be able to put all that online right away. Well one thing we have to ask right now is what happens if you're an employee of KNC? Well you have the ASICs right when they arrive at cost. And who knows what cost there is, but say they're doing a 50% markup. Well, then you know while you're holding the chips that you might be able to run a 51% attack at half price. And that issue can be multiplied by another factor because what if you're an employee at the chip foundry? if we realize that there are actually people sitting at these chip foundries, right? The employees of these semiconductor plants, and there's a number of them, right? So a list of semiconductor fabrication plants, and you've got all these guys. A lot of it re are repeated right there. You have Intel, Global Foundries, TSMC, which I think is the biggest in the world, right? But if you're working at one of these foundries, which cost billion or a few billion dollars to make, how expensive would it be for you to get control of 51% of the network? And again, the price seems to drop consistently more. Okay, you might even be the first one to get a hold of, say, a five terahash chip or something like that. And if you're able to run those off at night, well, it's clear that you won't need to be running them off that long till you get a 51% attack or greater. So as we talk about trust and trustless networks, we have to really consider how much we're trusting the folks who are working at TSMC, who are able to manufacture as many chips as they want, how much we have to trust the folks at KNC, right? We've already had a lot of issues with mining companies, butterfly labs, etc., possibly mining before they're actually sending out their product. So again, we may not question proof of work or big mining pools, but we really have to question who's at the chip foundries and what kind of access do they have to a SHA-256 chip. And is this really something that you need a private design to make? No, this is a fairly easy chip to design. So that's one big question we really have to think about as we're looking at the future of Bitcoin. And so we really have to consider the possibility that someone working at a chip foundry or even a group of people working at one of these chip fabrication plants could drop the price of a 51% attack to well under $20 million. And this is troubling because whenever you go online and you see talks, you hear people talking much, much larger numbers, often in the billions, but certainly in the 700, 800 millions. And if you could really run an attack for $200 million, well, this is dangerous. And so we really have to start thinking about who can afford that type of attack. Well, we know that LeBron James, Tiger Woods, a number of soccer players, they're all making between advertising and salary well more than $20 million a year. So do we have to consider them as possible attack vectors for Bitcoin? We really have to understand that $20 million is a very small amount. So in part two, when we look at malicious attackers, we're going to really have to consider that, yes, for a bank, this is tiddlywinks. Remember, HSBC paid $1.9 billion just in fines in December. So $20 million, $100 million, $200 million, $500 million is really not that big a deal to the banking industry, certainly if they were going to get together. But uh, people talk about a sovereign like a country that feels like their financial power is going to be evaporated by Bitcoin running this attack. And some of these sovereigns may have access or even control of chip foundries. So think about that. But then we have to think that even just a regular old terrorist, right? And not all terrorists are poor. 
In fact, most of them aren't. Okay, Osama bin Laden's father was a billionaire. He was constructing half of Saudi Arabia. A lot of terrorists have a lot of money. And $20 million just starts to sound a little bit like $20 million. It starts to look very dangerous for Bitcoin. And certainly, if you were going to run a malicious attack, you have to consider that there's more than one thing you can do. You can add hashing power, but you can even buy up coins. And as you're hitting with a 51% attack, maybe you'll dump millions of dollars of coins at the same time to really make the price drop. Or, and we'll talk about both of these in the next video, there might be a way to lure miners away from Bitcoin as you're running an attack. Okay, and the real key here is not to land us with a specific price, but it's really to start to consider how inexpensive the price of a 51% attack might be. And then at the very end of part two, we're going to look at some of the methods that we might be able to use, one proposed by Gavin Andreessen in 2012, so it's almost two years ago, that we could put in algorithmically to make it more difficult and more imposing for an attacker to attack Bitcoin. So I hope this helps. Please stay tuned for our next video when we really look at all the shenanigans that can happen with a 51% attack. And it's not just double spending. Some really devilish things that can be done with a 51% attack that cannot be done with a 49% attack. So please stay tuned for that. And remember to like, comment, subscribe, do whatever it is you do, and we'll catch you at the next video.